Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is bargains and ripoffs. We're working in the standard Bertrand competition framework. We have each firm simultaneously choosing a price P, and both of these firms have a symmetric marginal cost of production C, and we have a single consumer with a reservation price V that is larger than that marginal cost of production. That's our standard Bertrand competition framework. An implicit assumption in this framework, however, is that the consumer automatically learns what the prices are. That's a little bit weird. What this is saying is that the consumer in this model is minding his or her own business, going about his or her everyday life, when suddenly, out of the sky, the prices for both of those firms are just coming down and smacking this consumer upside the head. The consumer can't help but automatically know this sort of information. That's weird. So we're going to modify this Bertrand competition model to relax that assumption. And specifically, we're using the bargains and ripoffs modification. So here, the consumer does not automatically observe prices, but there is something that the consumer can do about this. Specifically, the consumer may pay a cost K greater than zero to learn the pricing information. To empirically motivate that, this might mean that the consumer goes through the newspaper ads to see what grocery prices are for the week. Or it could be that the consumer is picking up the phone and calling each of these firms to ask what their prices are. We might think that either of those activities isn't particularly costly, so we might not think of K as being a very large number, but they do require some effort, so this is a greater than zero cost. The consumer then chooses a firm. If the consumer has acquired information, then its choice can be based off of the information that it has learned, so it could choose whichever firm has presented the lowest price. If the consumer is not paying to learn that information, however, the firm that it's choosing is going to be in the dark. It doesn't actually know what the price is. But once it has chosen a firm, it will then see the price and it will purchase if the price is no greater than its reservation value and it will not buy otherwise. So you can think about this. If you don't go through the newspaper ads, you can still go to your local grocery store and you will see the price that is posted once you are there. And if that price is lower than your reservation value, then you happily buy. But if it's greater than your reservation value, well, unfortunately, you're out of luck. So this is our revised model of Bertrand competition. And the central question that we are asking in this lecture is how large must K be for the firms to set the equilibrium price at V, the consumer's reservation value? To ground that question, if we go back a slide, if we're looking at just the top three bullet points, that's our standard Bertrand competition. And we know from previous lectures that if we're in standard Bertrand competition without the modification, each firm sets its price at the marginal cost of production. What that means is that the consumer gets all of the surplus here, and the firms get none of the surplus. So a central question that comes out of your standard Bertrand competition framework is how might we end up seeing prices going above that marginal cost of production? And we're implementing the modification with bargains and ripoffs where we are having this slight cost necessary to acquire pricing information. And we're looking at the extreme version of this with this central question here. We're asking how can we get that equilibrium price from the firms to be all the way at the consumer's reservation value, which would mean that the consumer receives none of the surplus and the firms receive all of that surplus. How large must K be for that to happen? Well, I want you to think about this for a moment. Pause the lecture if you have to. If you have some good thoughts about what might be happening here, go ahead and type them up and put them in the discussion sections below. And if you are ready, I will now reveal the answer. The answer is that this can happen for any cost. 
It doesn't matter how infinitesimally small the cost is of acquiring information. The firms can still use this to leverage those prices all the way up to the consumer's reservation value. Let's try to figure out why that's the case. Imagine that we have both of the firms putting the price at the reservation value. So firm one and firm two both select their price equal to V. Think about how the consumer would best respond to that. It does not make sense for the consumer to pay a search cost here. If it is anticipating that each of the firm is setting the same price, then paying the search cost to find out what the price is, is extra effort. It doesn't actually matter. It shouldn't be trying to acquire information. It should not try to be a bargain hunter if there is no bargain out there to be had. So if the search cost only is going to be expensive and not provide any sort of benefit, you shouldn't do it. The consumer is then indifferent between the purchase choice as a consequence. Both of those prices are at a reservation value V, so the consumer is just willing to do it and it doesn't care which firm it's going to. Now given that, neither firm has incentive to change its price. If the consumer does not purchase from a firm, the firm's choice doesn't actually matter because it's not getting any of the revenue brought in. And if the consumer is purchasing from a firm, well, if you lower your price, that means you're getting less profit. And if you raise your price, that means you're not getting a sale. And so as a consequence, what this means is that we can get those prices all the way up to the reservation value that the consumer has. Hope you enjoyed this lecture and hope to see you next time. Take care.